Yo, what's good, Spirit Squad? As always, it's your boy Dre, and today we're taking a look at Bant Spirits in Modern, because Strixhaven is here, and we've been kind of ignoring our friends in Bant Land, mostly because all of the spirits that come from Strixhaven don't actually fit in the spirits deck, which is pretty annoying. But that does not mean we do not get a sweet new toy out of Strixhaven, and not only does it give us a very spirit-like effect, it even has flying. So the card I'm talking about today is going to be Elite Spellbinder, so if you're familiar with PVDDR's card, that is what we're going to be taking a look at within the spirit shell. And for anybody who is not familiar with it, what it does is for two and a white, we go ahead and get a flyer, and when Elite Spellbinders enter the battlefield, you look at target opponent's hand, you choose a card from it to exile. That card stays exiled, but they can cast it and it costs two more, so you just tax whatever thing is in their hand. So if they have a Primeval Titan, it's going to cost eight. If they want to cast an Ugin, it's going to cost ten. Whatever you find in their hand, you can kind of kidnap and make it cost two more. So that's pretty sweet on its own, right? Um, but not only do we get that effect, but it's also flying, which means it can just go ahead and attack just like the rest of our spirits can. And even though it's not a spirit, Elite Spellbinder totally gets the honorary spirit title and I'm all the way here for trying to play it. The best part about it is within the world of Bant Spirits, which is where we're going to be taking a look at it, with a Noble Hierarch, you can even put it into play as early as turn two. So if your opponent starts off with, say, an Arbor Elf and a Green White Land, well, chances are you don't want them to resolve a Collected Company. So what we can do is, with a Noble Hierarch out, we can put out a turn 2 Elite Spellbinder, snipe the Collector Company that's probably in their hand, and now it's going to cost 6 instead of 4, making their game plan a lot slower. That alone is huge game. But we also get to do a bunch of other sweet stuff too. So against control decks, we get to take sweepers out of their hands, like Damnations or Extinction Events or, you know, whatever they happen to be playing against us. Again, against a lot of the big mana decks, I think this is where Elite Spellbinder is going to be at its best, because not only can we snipe their big giant payoff card, like Ugin the Spirit Dragon, like Primeval Titan, but it also attacks for 3 in the air, which, along with the rest of our spirits, is a pretty reasonable clock. Against anything that happens to use a miracle mechanic. So this is one of going to be one of the really cool things, because Blue-White Control is a real deck within Modern. So if they reveal a Terminus, because it's going to be the first card drawn in their hand. We get to put the Miracle Trigger on the stack. And if you violin an Elite Spellbinder, because that's the only way you're going to get it at instant speed. Well, I guess you can go, go into it, but that's pretty bad. Anyway, if you go ahead and you violin an Elite Spellbinder and you take the Terminus out of their hand, it's no longer in their hand, so they actually don't get to cast it, which is super insane -o. You just get to flash in your 3-drop and... Not only is the Terminus going to cost 8 when they try to hard cast it, they can no longer pay 1 or even 3 because it doesn't work. It's no longer in their hand, so they don't get to do the miracle thing. It's That's going to be lit when it happens. And the really cool thing about Elite Spellbinder is, is that, say you're playing like an Aether Vial Mirror match, right? You're playing Spirits versus Spirits, everybody's doing their cool tempo things, your opponent activates their Aether Vial, bam, Elite Spellbinder. In response to their Aether Vial activation, they no longer get the card. Or, you know, say they um, activate their Aether Vial, the Aether Vial has three charge counters on it, you put an Elite Spellbinder, you nab the only three drop that's in their hand, and even though they can cast it for five mana, they don't get to put it in off the vial, so that just ruins your opponent's nefarious plans. Or, you can violin an elite spellbinder in response to your opponent's stoneforge mystic take their batter skull out of their hand bam your plan sucks now if you want access to that batter skull at all this game not only is it no longer in your hand for stoneforge mystic but it's also going to cost you seven so sucks to be you um so that's just going to be a lot of really cool things that gets us around there and when a card is both good against the slower and the faster decks of the format, that's really a card that we want to be exploring. So here's going to be a sample deck list that we're looking at, and this is going to have three copies of Elite Spellbinder in it. 
So here, everything else is going to be relatively normal, average spirit stuff. We've got four noble hierarchs, three collected companies, and then a bunch of spirits that do the work on their own too, like Mausoleum Wanderer. You know, we've got Shacklegeist, Skyclave Apparition, Spell Quellers, the usual suspects, right? We've got three each of collected company Aether Vial, so we've got six total non-creatures and three copies of Elite Spellbinder. Once again, since this card has flying, this doesn't actually disrupt the fact that our deck wants to attack in the air. It plays right along with that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, because we're playing Elite Spellbinder, it's gonna be a, um, you know, a, a white pip in your mana base. So you're not playing um, an additional spirit, which means that we do want access to more white mana than usual, even if it is only one card and only one white pip to account for it. So all I've done to the typical mana base here is just made sure to include a second copy of Sea Chrome Coast in this deck, just so that it's a little easier to cast. Nothing major, nothing crazy, but it's just something that you probably want to account for when you're building your deck and you're playing cards that don't really play nicely with your Cavern of Souls. But Elite Spellbinder doesn't even play all that poorly with your Cavern of Souls. So what we're doing here is Elite Spellbinder is a human cleric. Cleric we don't necessarily care about, but it's a human, which is good with Noble Hierarch because it's a human and our mono red uh, hate card of choice here because we want the interaction of cavern of souls to go well is going to be oriok champion because it's a human cleric so we just want to make sure that we're lining up all of our cards relatively nicely when playing with the elite spellbinder so that we don't accidentally mess around and you know kind of like screw ourselves up so that's just going to be um a couple of little things to note about playing the elite spellbinder specifically within the spirit shell and our sideboard is not really going to be focused around Elite Spellbinder, but I think our sideboard is pretty well tuned for what the metagame is currently doing. So right now at the top of the metagame, we get to play against things like Heliod decks, against things like Death Shadow, uh, Prowess decks of various forms. There's Blue Red, there's Blue White, there's, I'm sorry, there's Red White, there's Mono Red. There's a lot of Prowess running around, okay? It's Soul Scar Mage is lit. There's a bunch of Tron, both Eldrazi and regular. And I think our sideboard is pretty well tuned to fight all of those things. We've got two copies of Isolate. And this is going to be our super cool tech card against all of those prowess decks. So once again, Soul Scar Mage is just like the actual nut right now. It's basically everywhere. You need to be ready for it. Um, but there's also two copies of Path to Exile because, you know, just getting rid of... Um, the prowess creatures and of course death shadow on its own isn't enough reason for isolate to be the only removal spell in your deck sometimes you'll need to get things like primeval titans dryads of the elysian grove i don't know thought not seers off the table and that's where the two copies of path to exile are going to be good but we're also playing some tron hate here we're going to be playing two copies of ceremonious rejection in our other one converted mana cost spot or i guess one mana value spot now we're playing two Remorseful Clerics and two Rest in Pieces because the graveyard just needs to be respected. So we really want to make sure that we're kind of on top of that. Three Oriok Champions help out against the Mono Red decks. There's a lot of Prowess running around. There's a lot of Burn running around. Death Shadow is very real and Pro Black and Pro Red helps out there. And then just two Force Negations to round it out. So that's basically everything that you would normally look for in your Spirits deck. So now that we know what's going on with the Elite Spellbinder, a bunch of reasons as to why we would actually want to play it and what the deck list looks like. And also I'm going to go ahead and have a link to the deck list in the description so you guys can check that out there too. But what we're going to do here is today is Tuesday and I'm going to be playing this deck list tomorrow, tomorrow being Wednesday. Um, it's going to be 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time and that's going to be right at my Twitch channel. That's going to be twitch.tv slash rearranged AS and I'll even have a link to that in the description below too so you can just go ahead and click right on the Twitch channel and then check it out when we all go live. So we'll get to go ahead have a lot of fun with this list. I expect Elite Spellbinder to be super good against a lot of the big mana decks and let me know what you think of elite spellbinder if you've tried it in any other decks like i don't know any blue white control shells any human lists miscellaneous tempo decks let me know so drop a comment below if you like the video of course just make sure to well like it subscribe to the channel and as always i will see y'all on the next one